Hey, good morning guys. I uh, just wanted to give a little update on this channel. Um, you saw in the last video there, we built this rack and able to get uh, all the sheet metal off the ground and uh, in a good spot. Um, the CNC plasma table should be shipping here in the next day or two. Uh, we'll get it maybe Friday or it could be early next week. It's coming uh, from Jackson, Tennessee, uh, which is mm, maybe six, 500, 600 miles away and it's coming by hot shot. Uh, so, um, got to figure out how to get it, you know, if it's going to be like a rollback or if it's on a trailer, you know, how am I going to get it off of there? Cause it's not on wheels and I don't have a forklift obviously. So, uh, got to figure that out. Maybe I can jack it up and clamp some casters to the bottom of it. I got to call them and find out, you know, if they've left flanges on the bottom of the legs to bolt casters to. And if that's the case, then I could just uh, clamp some or bolt some to it and just roll it off down the ramps and in here. Uh, if not, I'll have to figure out another approach. I'm really, I hate all this rigging and unloading. I'm just really not set up for it. I, I could use a forklift is what I need, but um, anyway, the compressor, um, you, uh, oh, let me just ask a quick question on this. I'm going to be making a hole punch station with this and using the foot pedal um, and making this whole unit is going to be adjustable on some um, linear rail so that um, there'll be a fence and then this part will be adjustable on linear rails so that you can adjust the depth of uh, how deep or how far into the middle of the piece that you're working on and you can just adjust it and there'll be a little uh, tape measure on it and um, a clamp you know to be able to adjust it back and forth so the fence will be um, stationary and this part will move back and forth to adjust the depth um, I also want to make a new stripper for it this one you know is pretty far out from the sides and if you don't have a piece that you know like if you tried to punch that like that well it, it's not going to release it because it needs the stripper to pull it loose so I'm going to make a one piece stripper. This is actually just two little pieces of angle bolted to the side of it. A one piece stripper out of a solid piece and mill it out. And, you know, so that no matter where you put a piece in there, it'll be able to strip, strip that off of there. At least I'm going to attempt to make that. So um, the question about this is, can I see all these uh, cap head socket screws? Can I unbolt all those and get this bottom piece to come out of there? so that I can fit this in the mill, drill some extra holes in it. I'm going to mill the back slot of back, back edge of this to uh, increase the throat depth a little bit. Um, or is there hydraulic fluid down in this part? I wouldn't think that there would be. I would think all the hydraulics are up in here. And, um, but maybe it is, you know, so I don't know what you guys think. Uh, if I could just unbolt all that so I could, you know, do some machine work and drilling and stuff on that as without. So having, anyway, let me know what you think on unbolting on that. If I'll be getting into the hydraulics on it or not. Um, the air compressor updates. Uh, Quincy finally came out earlier this week, and uh, what they discovered. I'm going to overlay a picture here of this one component called the contactor, and it is basically a big circuit breaker. Um, I don't think it's still apart. We'll go out there and take a look. Um, it's basically a big circuit breaker that um, when you yeah he's got it all back together but when you um, when you flip this switch on and off actually he's left left it off of there but when you flip that you can tell it's got a lot of pressure behind it and it flips a breaker inside the the unit well what I'm gonna overlay a picture on this so you can kind of see what I'm talking about but this thing had gotten full of ants and the ants had gotten inside the contactor and created a layer between the two main points of contact so when the contractor contactor tried to close um, it got close enough for the uh, you know for the current to arc across it but not to make a connection because you had that layer of ants in between it. of course the ants got electrocuted and fried um, but they caused it to, to basically fry the, the contacts on both sides because of the arc across. So um, it was unbelievable. I just, I don't know, I've never had anything like that happen before. Of course, you know, we are out in the country. Uh, you can see we got, you know, stuff around and 
there's bugs of course and I spray every about once a month with bug spray um, so I'm gonna have to get something specific for this to keep inside the compartment here there's a cavity inside here where all your electronics and stuff are and um, I'll, I'll put some stuff you know ant traps and whatever in there to just collect if anything that might get in the, in it um, or is that a bad thing if you if you were to put something in there those ant trap things kind of collect you know they kind of attract bugs that's the point of them they get get them to come inside so um, anyway so it's good to know there's nothing really wrong with the machine it's it's uh, just you know not not anything faulty with that but definitely got to do something for the bugs um, and uh, so um, yeah that's a that's about it I don't know what what other updates to give um, on the mill the horizontal spindle I still don't have it running yet um, I got to get down there and mess around with more wires and see um, I'm just gonna disconnect those wires temporarily and see if it will uh, release that spindle break without the wires hooked up at all um, or does it or is it one of those natural you know normally closed things where if you don't have power to it the uh, the brake is on and the way you get the brake off is to apply the correct power to it maybe that's the case so I don't know if that'll work or not I don't really know what else to try on that um, let me get let me know because I've, I've double checked it. I'm pretty sure I got the wires connected up correctly um, but I'm gonna double check it again and you guys are right about the uh, cat 40 tooling um, <clears throat> is not going to fit this without making another draw bar um so and i should be able to make i was thinking i might need somebody to make one on a lathe but really the only you know thing that's threaded is just the bottom part of it it's just a shaft with a flat on the top and um some threads on the bottom you know so i, I don't know if this is a half inch uh thread or what but i yeah it looks like oh maybe bigger than that um maybe three quarter inch but I ordered this drill chuck in because the 18N that came with the mill is really um, uh, got some issues and um, it's uh, got a lot of run out in it. Um, so I wanted a keyless chuck and I got this Lambrick one here, which I guess is a high quality German. It seems to be well made, but it of course came with Cat 40 instead of the NMTB. So I can't use it right now until I get the draw bar going. But anyway um that's it just uh continue to make progress you guys have uh seen the one cabinet over there that's finished with the microwave and then here's another one of the kitchen cabinets that's kind of coming together got to make some handles for this uh pretty happy with how this turned out and how it's looking i think it's a, a pretty neat look uh somebody i think it was retro weld asked about this mesh uh this is some kind of woven mesh and uh, I got it from Metal Supermarkets. They ordered it for me, and it was about $350 a sheet, and that's not even a full sheet. It was, uh, I think they were, the size of the sheet was like a 36 by 42 for 350 bucks. That's $700 worth of mesh in this, in these cabinets, but it's definitely a huge difference on um, that compared to just like the normal expanded metal, you know, that you get at the, uh, that you get at the, uh, you know the the regular steel yards the stuff here that's like fifty dollars a sheet I and mean, it's kind of you know everybody's got that so um and then here's a different kind of that woven mesh that's also expensive it's about three or four hundred dollars a sheet uh for this stuff right here and i've i've made a few cabinets out of that uh, i got a little bit of it left there so anyway let me know what you guys think about the hydraulics on this uh on this punch um and we'll go from there thanks everybody uh, I was going to show you guys real quick too. This these mornings have been nice. You know, I've been opening the doors up and uh, been able to keep the doors open for part of the day, and then it kind of gets warms up in the afternoon. But you can see from the paint job left. I'm going to show you this. Had a little friend here this morning. I opened the doors and had this this little girl out here. She seems really sweet, um, but maybe not exactly taken care of. She's had puppies recently, and you can tell she's a uh, quite friendly. Hey there, girl. But yeah, she's just been hanging around. She's been sitting there by the truck. Hopefully she'll go back home. Um, and I'm not gonna feed her because uh, that'll just be 
she'll be wanting to hang around, but she's a friendly one.